Thank you for staying with us. And of course, our guest just joined us in the studio. Uh, he, he is the uh, national coordinator of uh, National Social Investment Program, NSIP, uh, Dr. Umar Buba Binder. You are welcome to our studios. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to be here. Happy Independence. Thank you. I feel great. <laughs> Happy Independence too. And I'm sure, you know, you enjoyed your time yesterday watching the parade, you know, at the Eagle Square listening to the presidential speech which happens to be his uh, last you know uh first october broadcast actually honestly i slept off i read the address after i woke up oh and it's excellent interesting now the president said a whole lot of things in in that address and then of course uh, when the administration came to be in uh through 2015 there were three key issues that they wanted to tackle we talk about uh, security, we talk about uh, corrupt fight against corruption, we talk about fixing the economy. And, you know, fast forward to 2019, we had, uh, you know, elevation, uh, I mean, poverty elevation to that mix. It's wrapping up, it's rounding up. How successful have they been? Well, actually, in the spirit of celebrating 62 years after independence, I take the word celebration very literally. Celebration is not complaining. Celebration is not lamenting. Celebration is really celebration. It's a joyous word. So reviewing uh, 62 years to start with, as a country, I think we've done very well as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that is a tiny little gap in my assessment is that we're not good at celebrating successes. We succeed and we turn around and knock it down. We succeed, I mean, look, I've said it before. How do you mean we succeed and turn around and knock, knock it, down? it down? Well, you see, there is hardly any country mm. that just out of the blue decided to establish a new federal capital. England or the United Kingdom tried to establish a place called Milton Keynes. Till today they are trying. That was way, way, way behind. behind. Uh, Nigeria's uh, trial. Australia tried with Canberra, right? Till today they are still struggling. Here comes the great Nigeria. We moved to Abuja, we built it up, we got going, and then we, st we complain about oh, the city is not this. This is a functional city. It's a modern city. It's a success for this great country. Two, look, the fantastic performances that we have done as a united front in mm. sports. We've even won an Olympic medal within this period of time. We've won the African Cup of Nations many, many times. And everybody knows sports is an element of human endeavor that puts people together, together. young people, unity, and so on and so forth. We got there. Instead of sustaining it and enjoying it, again, we fumbled, now we're struggling. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Yeah. Look at universities, pro proliferation of universities. There's hardly, at least in this continent, that any country has the number of universities we have. We have over 220 or 50 fully functional universities. In fact, private universities only started after in, 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 when Obasanjo came in, 20, uh, mm -hmm. in 1999. Today we have nearly 80 of them. Look. And where do you get the vibrant young people to propel um, security and unity, to propel development? It is the massive production of universities, engineers, doctors, everything. And we have it. But yet we turn around and say, oh, we are suffering from insecurity. Oh, unemployment. So here we are. We are not good at celebrating successes. And I think we've done a lot of mileages. And so, but anyway. Coming back to your question, Mr. President spoke yesterday and he reminded Nigerians that when I came in 2015, I had a three-legged race, you know, one leg, I will fight corruption. The other leg, I will reform and fix the economy. The other leg, I will look at our insecurity, which we all inherited, all the three ele elements we inherited in a ter ter terrible case. Mm. My assessment is that uh, the 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 elder statesman have done very well. He is, uh, in fact, the first good point that I'll give him is that for having offered himself continuously after his military 
uh, experience and he rose to the very highest. He still never gave up. He transformed to be a, a, a Democrat. He contested many times. Very few people will contest this number of times and still be there. And finally he got it. And I can tell you, knowing what he inherited, we we're all there. And uh, uh, he did very well. But I mean, the, the assessment, one level after the other, probably is the subject matter of we dig into the program. OK, one of the blueprints of uh, this administration is to take many Nigerians, if thousands of Nigerians, out of poverty. And that must have bathed um, national social investment program. So how far would you say this program has helped in taking Nigerians out of poverty? Well, you see, poverty has remained the real devil for this development of this country since 1960. People, people don't assess it very, very carefully. And actually, our leaders are very good in trying to solve this problem. Be be without solving pro poverty problems, you cannot make progress. You remember back in the days, I don't want to take us too far, but mm. during the military era, we had Mamsa, we had Difri, we had mm. even back back then, Operation Feed the Nation, Green Revolution. All mm. these are poverty elevation programs. Back to the Abacha time when he had FIP. FIP was a poverty elevation mm. program. Obasanjo came and we did NAPEP. NAPEP mm. was a poverty elevation program. Mm. Uh, President Jonathan came we had Shopi. Mm. Shopi was a poverty eradication program. Mm. Now, this president realized that very, very strategically and innovatively, reviewing all this, he asked the question, why? Why has poverty Remain. remained a problem after investing so much resources, putting all these ideas, and he realized some few things. One, the policy or the direction to solve poverty must be evidence-based. You have to research and look and target critical things that can then snowball into affecting others. Mm -hmm. And that is why the whole social investment program rallies around young people mm -hmm. and also the poor and vulnerable families. These are the two core elements of absolute poverty. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he realized that if you continue coming up with a program because you are a caring administration, keeping the program in the presidency, mm -hmm. each time a government drops off, it drops off with, the, with its own program. He now decided to institutionalize the fight against poverty. Mm. And that is how he established the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs as the core uh, coordinating ministry mm. uh, that coordinates all aspects of poverty. And ministries don't die easily. Yes, they may transform and change and probably break into two or three, but they hardly die. And that is his, 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 his uh, accolade on this. Three, he realized that actually most of the programs that have been reeled out have always been men running it. And men are not as good, in my opinion, I mean, I was part of many of them, as good in fighting poverty. He chose a woman, mm -hmm. a woman with experience, a younger woman, you know, who is committed, and he appointed her as the minister. That, again, is an ingredient for actually mm -hmm. making progress. And then that NSIP, the Social mm -hmm. Investment Program, that was being implemented in the presidency, in the office of His Excellency, the Vice President, he brought it into the ministry. So here we have a three or four pronged strategy that consolidated the fight against poverty. Zooming onto the NSIP, NSIP has four clusters. And as I said before, it focuses on young people based on research and also families, poor and vulnerable families. Mm. Young people, because if you look at what is happening, the pool of young people that we are coughing into the economy is beyond what you can think of. Every ill in this country has something to do with young people. Mm -hmm. When you look at IPOP, it's young people. When you look at all the video clips you get on kidnapping, it's young people. Well, uh, uh, Doctor, yeah. I know some people who said, uh, quite interestingly, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, he was making reference to the fact that, uh, you know, the level of poverty is high in the country also as a result of the eroding value system in our society. Maybe I'll get your thought on that after we must have taken this uh, next report uh, put together by uh, Dayo La. It's all talking about the moral values in Nigeria. Our cultures, our values are fast eroding and something must be done to bring back uh, those values for a better Nigeria. And we still have uh, the national coordinator of National Social Investment Program, Dr. Umar Bendere, in the studio. So, sir, mm. you heard it all. 
about our eroding values and everybody wants to get rich quick that may just be responsible for some of the problems that we have in the country what do you have to say about that what should we do to bring back our cultures and our values values of hard work well thank you very much i think values are good we have good values transmitted to our children is good but i think nigerians should understand that we should minimize making flat sweeping statements on all, all of us. I think this country is segmented into two or three layers. There is highly urban areas where you have mobility, the infrastructure, the electricity, the cyber cafes and everything are there. And these places are Lagos, Abuja, Ibadan, Potakot and so on and so forth. So life of people, their children and young people there are different. When you come down to the middle level, why you get state and local government capitals? Well, you know, the system is not as stable as the higher level. Again, the behavior is different. Mm. And when you go to the right at the bottom, our rural areas, where majority of our people live, actually the life again is totally different. Mm. As you go up from the bottom, actually, we have failed to ensure that we enrich the bottom, to ensure that people stay there, learn more, participate more and cope with the life more. If a young chap leaves his village, goes to a polytechnic and goes to university, I have not seen 1% of such young people going back to the villages again to become better farmers, to become better you know, doctors who work in the villages. They always want to stay up there. And then, so that's what, where the get rich quick thing, because once you are in the city, your, your mentality changes. and. With the introduction of private things, private school, private clinic, private everything, mm. the, the what Nigerians apply as Ajebota syndrome mm. emerges. And then you feel like you have arrived. Your children are wearing better clothes. You are freer with your children. You sh even showcase it. You know, you go around, you speak English to them, and so on and so forth. It's a sign and index of development. And I think we again have to reflect and come back to normalcy rather than just saying flat out that our value system is eroding. It's eroding because we introduce it, we encourage it. I have seen at the airports for children who have privileges to travel with their parents. Children at the age of four, five are traveling first class. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. And their leaders, their older people are passing back to the village, squeezed up in the economy, and they're there sitting on a big seat by themselves. The parents think this is wonderful. A child that is grown up like that will definitely think differently. Yeah. Then you get children going to private schools. Now you cannot beat them. You know, you can't touch a child and say, Simon, stop it, G sit down here. The parent will come to the school next day to say, don't talk to my children like that. Mm -hmm. I am paying money. You encourage it. So what do you expect? Same thing when you go, to, you don't go to the normal market, you go to supermarkets mm -hmm. where everything is electricity. It mm -hmm. is tally, it is, everything is arranged. You take the chap to open market in the village, the, the child will do like this, and you think your culture is eroded. So it is us in these layers that introduce mm -hmm. it, and then we turn back again and complain. I, and I like when you say it is mm -hmm. us, because mm -hmm. there's another aspect of us that mm -hmm. is really, really not, you know, it, uh, good for the country. And they, it's all about this division in the country today, because uh, a lot of people tend to play religious, ethnic cards here and there in order to score a point, And that has not really all gone well for the country. What can we do really different in order to, you know, go back to the old days where we believe that my <laughs> next neighbor is actually, sorry, my friend is my neighbor or rather good neighborliness in the society? Mm -hmm. I think, I think Nigerians, we all have it. We have the good, the bad and the ugly, all of it. It's up to how we unleash it. Look at an older Nigerian. He goes to Lagos airport and he's heading to the UK. He's erratic, he's shouting to everybody, he's chasing people, don't touch me. He has police everywhere escorting him. He wants to, he doesn't want to join the queue. He is totally an irresponsible person. Mm. And then he enters the plane, British Airways. It's not Nigerian Airways. Their code of conduct is different. And he comes down, he becomes normal. The moment he drops at Heathrow, mm. he becomes a totally normal person. The carousel, he doesn't move to the carousel shouting and shoving people. He stands like a gentle person very far, watching his baggage. 
when his baggage comes, he picks it very nicely. And if he touches anybody, say, oh, excuse me, mm. sorry about that. Please. He changes even his accent. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then he carries his bag. He carries his own trolley, no matter how big he is. With, when we travel, you see ministers, mm -hmm. you see big-time MDs. They're carrying them, pushing them. When they go to taxi, if they have, don't have anybody, they join the queue. Meaning that Nigerians have it in them. But the same person, after two weeks in the UK, Coming back to Lagos, the moment he lands, he changes again to a Nigerian. He's, they, they, they will meet him at the door of the airport. He is now, his passport is collected. He is above queuing up to get his stamp. He passes everywhere. The system supports it. And then by the time his luggage is the first to come out, mm -hmm. nobody checks his luggage. Again, he comes back to normal. So we have it, but we encourage all this. So to me, as far as I'm concerned, the way to solve this, I like the development of young people. These are the people who will take over. Mm -hmm. And the best factories, the best systems where you can inoculate these changes is your tertiary institutions. Mm -hmm. Go to the polytechnics, go to the nursing schools, go to the colleges of agriculture, go to the universities. This is where you are pulling millions of young people between the ages of 19, 20 to 25 to 28. Work on them there. Don't create a university of Ibadan that is purely Yoruba university. No, it's not good for your country. Don't create university of Nsuka as a purely Igbo university. Is that is not good. Don't make ABU as a northern university, just speaking house uh, all over the place. Don't turn university of Madugur into a northeastern university. Create cosmopolitan universities. We were there before. University of Ibadan, that's where Professor Jibril Amin graduated from. That's what Professor Ia Abubakar graduated okay. from. And Thank so, you. So when you have this, walk there, and then as you unleash these young people, mm -hmm. already you have a Nigeria that is modeled at the highest level. Yeah, Doctor, you told us that as a nation and as we are celebrating this 62nd anniversary that we have a whole lot of things to celebrate. Now we want to celebrate our beauty in diversity. And that is coming from NTA Education uh, Station, that is ETV. We are who we are. I really like that. As Nigerians, very resilient, bold, and dogged people. So, sir, you saw that report, mm. and you mentioned about, you said some things about our sports, our entertainment, music, and the need to celebrate those things. So now, how can we really leverage on these things that bind us together for the, uh, for the unity of our country? Yeah, thank you. I think, like I said before, Nigeria has it all. We just decide what to take and what not to take. If you look at our food, Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's by force or by nature, it is struggling to unite us. Today, Pomo mm -hmm. is mainly eaten by Yoruba people, mm -hmm. but now it's universal. But nobody knows Yoruba people with cows. Mm -hmm. Cows come from the north and the skin is eating in the south. And this is trying to tell us that support the cows industry mm -hmm. so that the food mm -hmm. will be cheap. Automatic, but conversely, mm. the Yoruba man only celebrates with kola nut. He doesn't eat it regularly. Hausa people eat kola nut. They have never seen a kola nut tree, mm. but I'm telling you, he eats it while he when he wakes up. He eats it. It's very, very, very addictive. Again, kola nut is trying to force that. Look, calm down, guys. Work together. Support kola nut production so that you can have it. And so on. When I was young, Gary, I used to think it's an Igbo food. Mm -hmm. Up to university. Mm -hmm. We even used to run away from it. But look, Gary is the most universal food on earth. You can eat it, just smoke it like that mm -hmm. with powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. You can cook it and eat it with vegetable. Mm -hmm. You can eat it with groundnuts and milk. Mm -hmm. It has all the combination. Now everybody eats Gary. Mm -hmm. But yet, look at Gary. We produce it manually, despite all these universities. We harvest it and process it manually. We even enjoy eating it manually. We have not lifted it to the level for the globe to actually accept it. So our food is one that is struggling to unite us, and we're forcing ourselves to actually mm -hmm. break up. Sports, music. I have not seen anywhere in a nightclub or a celebration where when Davido is, is playing and then people will say, this is a Yoruba boy. <laughs> I don't want to dance it because I'm not a Yoruba man. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Immediately, you hear Buga coming up. Everybody <laughs> you see bouncing and everything. <laughs> and you forget where you're from. Again, wow. our music. 
is trying to unite us. So we have all the ingredients of unity, but as I submitted before, I think we need to work on our young people. Okay. I think we need to regulate the behavior of our older people. Mm -hmm. Anybody who brings in religious mm -hmm. sentiments to spread to young people, mm -hmm. I think should be sanctioned. Yeah. The Singapore did this. They did not take nonsense. And okay. today they are a, from very, very grassroots, developed a developing country, today they are first class country. Okay. Why? Because the leadership decided. Fair. Thank you very much, Doctor. So your last words to Nigerians as we celebrate 62nd anniversary, please, very quickly. I think we should be very, very proud of our great country. Mm -hmm. We should be very, very proud by our leaders. I think President Buhari has tried, and I think we should sustain some of the things. Sustain the social investment program. Sustain the fight against poverty. Sustain the fight against corruption. Sustain the work to actually evolve peace and unity. I think we have a chance and the young people try to think you have another 70 years to go. Don't waste your 70 years. You have a great country. I wish us all the very best. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much uh, Dr. Bendri for speaking to us this morning. It's always a pleasure.